All right, guys, this is going to be troubleshooting a no communication fault with the engine computer. This is a 2015 Ford Focus. And uh, for this job, we're going to be using the Ultimate CAN bus tester just to show you how fast and how easy it is to find faults like this. Right now, guys, we're pulling up on 12,000 subscribers. We got the discount, discount code 20 off. Go pick yours up today. Let me show you how we're going to get this done. So first thing, we're going to use the cheat sheet, right? We're using the... OBD Star DC706, we're going to go on the ECU flasher, we're going to go to the ECM because what we're going to want to do is pull up the actual uh, pinout for this engine computer, right? So, it's loading up, let's go to, um, we will find it under brand Ford, Ford, and this is going to be a 17.0, um, this is it right here, and we know this because we can do a Query boss ECU number like this and put in the number from the front of the ECM that number right there and then that's how you know which one it is by the way OBD star DC 706 available on our website you can clone this module do a lot of different modules if you haven't already let me cancel that out I don't need that so then we can do pinout right here and there's the ECM we go to uh, right here the pinout so right here we've got a cheat sheet guys so we know right away the main ones to be able to communicate with this module, we have a power here, a power here, a ground, and we got can high and can low. Here's the chart right here. You see that? So can high is up here, pin 54, then can low, which is uh, 41. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to test to see if we're getting uh, 12 volts battery power on this these two positives and then we're going to check our can line communications we're going to connect up with the ultimate can bus tester and um, it also comes with these piercing probes which makes it a bit easier to be able to connect up to modules it also comes with back probes so you can actually just back probe in as well like this right so it functions off of the milwaukee m12 platform so basically you just plug it in and then it's powered up. As you can see, the lights are on. It's a little uh, bright out here, so you can't see it very well. I'm gonna put it in the shade so we can see what's going on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually find the ground anywhere, just so that for you to have valid readings, you need to be connected to a common ground on the vehicle. So this spot looks good enough. I'm just gonna connect up right here. All right, so we got our ground there. All right, so looking at our cheat sheet, the power is one, two, three, four, five, the fifth one, so that's one two three four five so i think it's this green cable and then that would mean the can high is one two three four five the fifth one here if that is correct it's probably going to be blue and white yep that looks right one two three four five yep the blue and white and then the white those are the standard colors for ford this generation for can line communications so we got can high and can low right there and then this green cable here should be our power. So uh, we can just check, check that real quick. I'm gonna use can high on the ultimate can bus tester just to see our voltage. Um, so I'm gonna pierce it. You can always, when you pierce, use some um, liquid electrical tape and just clear up wherever you pierce. So I'm going to now pierce that and we're gonna see what the voltage is. So let's see what it's reading. And it's zero. Okay, let me check and make sure the key is on. Key was off on the seat. Key is on now. Guys, important note. Notice that check engine light did not come on. That's always something important to pay attention to when you first turn the key on. So, let's try that again. See what we got. Uh, let's see if you can see that. We got 12.1, so that's battery voltage. So that power is good. We need to test the other power. And the other power is in that top right hand corner, second one. We'll take it out. And there it is, it's a gray and yellow. And let's see what we got. Okay, so that low voltage right around what, 9.8, 10, as you can see it's fluctuating. That could be the reason for um, we have no communication. But 
it could also be more than one issue because look at this well this car was in an accident so we need to verify and while we're it's everything is open this is the perfect time especially with the ultimate can bus tester so what we're going to go ahead and do is connect up to the can lines and then we're going to actually connect our scanner here and if the can lines are good we should have good readings for can high and can low and on top of that using our scanner connected we should be able to communicate with the rest of the modules in the vehicle so let's hook that up right so we've got our red hooked up to can high and our black hooked up to can low as you can see there so the blue and white is can high the white is can low and our readings are right around what is that 2.7 and 1.8 to 2 yeah two point yeah uh-huh so that's close to um around um five volts uh which looks pretty decent so what we're going to go ahead and do now if these not only are we going to just look at that voltage we're actually going to connect our scanner and verify the integrity of that can communication by hooking up our scanner that's going to tell us for sure if we can actually communicate data and talk on this network so let's do that so i just plugged in our scanner see here and it's actually booting up let me get the blur out of here uh, hold on we got a lot of sunlight right here so as you can see it's booting up all right so it's getting powered this scanner um, gets power from the OBD port and it's getting powered directly from the ultimate CAN bus tester so like I say guys this is the advantage this is one of the reasons why we use the ultimate CAN bus tester because we can go anywhere under the vehicle it doesn't matter where we're at and access the CAN lines so we're going to go to Ford we'll tell it okay And we're going to try to scan the vehicle and see if we can um, communicate with any modules on the CAN bus. Uh, I'm going to go to, I can usually do an auto, but it might take long. So I'll just do a manually select and I'll select vehicle, Ford, and I'm going to find focus. Where is it at? Focus, 2.0. And this is a GDI, I believe. It's on. And there it is. It detected it. Yes. That's correct. So we're actually talking on the CAN communication lines right now. Right here from under the vehicle. Right? So you do not have to be at the OBD port or anything. It's loading. I'm not connected to the network. Let me just hit cancel, cancel, and I'm going to do a uh, systems a health report. And as you can see, we're communicating with the ABS module, and I'm going to it's going to scan and com communicate with all the different modules that it can on the CAN bus network. So that's to show you right here outside on the front of the car. So right now, I can already verify these CAN lines are good. So that is not the reason why we have no communication with the engine computer so the fault now is most likely going to lead to the low power reading we're seeing on that um, gray and yellow wire so I think that's the next step that we need to troubleshoot all right pulling up the wiring diagrams this is the engine computer PCM relay and this is the fuse that powers the ECM so we're gonna check that fuse I got my test light here let me connect it up I'm gonna hook up to battery to ground and then ground and now we're going to be able to test that fuse and see how that fuse is doing we got a light on that side on that side so that fuse is good so there's something going on let me look at the diagram all right now looking at the diagram this relay powers this fuse and this fuse then sends power to the gray and yellow cables to power on the, the engine computer so i think a good course of action is let's test voltage at this fuse that will tell us if it we're going to see if it's the same as the voltage we're getting down there something at 10 10 volts or if we're going to get full battery voltage at 12 volts up here so to do that since we don't need the uh can bus uh tester connected to the can lines anymore we've already verified that that part is good we're going to go ahead and borrow uh let's borrow the can high connector and just put a uh back probe on it so i've got it here and i'm just hitting on that fuse and we're getting low voltage as before 
All right, let's just connect to the battery positive and see if it's the same. All right, bat battery positive. It's looking, sorry about that, it's a bad view I've got here. It doesn't flicker like this, by the way. This is just between the camera, the refresh rate. It's like 11.9, 12 volts on battery positive. I know you can't really see very well, but it is. So we have a difference. There's a voltage drop, something is going on. So I think the next step is I'm gonna pull this PCM relay and I'm gonna bridge it and see if the voltage increases. That's gonna kind of narrow it down to what's going on. Now, if you saw the diagram, three and five are the actual power and the supply to the uh, fuse, right? So um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna bridge between these two, three and five, just as you see here on the fuse, right, on the relay. All right, so now I bridged it, so now we have uh, direct power between the two. So let's go back here and test and see if we still have the low voltage, at 10 volts or whatever it was. See if you can see that. Yeah, uh, it looks like, yeah, nine, 10, it's low. So it's not the relay. There's gonna be a problem most likely then internally in this fuse box because that power should come from one side. In fact, let's test it. We're gonna go right here on this side of it. We got at 12, let's go to that side, go to the other side. And it's right around 12 volts as well. You see that? I know it's blurry. It's like 11.9, 11.7. Sorry, I can't get a good angle. But then we go here on the actual fuse. You know what? I just thought about, God. I just thought about something. Uh, the problem could actually be the, the fuse itself. It could be uh, damaged. It could be corrosion. So what I'm going to do is pull that fuse and look at it because this has been sitting outside, you know, in the elements for I think a few years. So that can cause something like that corrosion in the actual fuse box itself or that fuse. So I'm gonna pull that. Sometimes just removing a fuse and reseeding it clears up some, some of the corrosion and can solve some issues. Let's see how that looks. Let's see if you can see that. Wow, guys, look at this. You ain't gonna believe this, man. That fuse was passing power but guess what this fuse is blown and it was passing power look at that let me, let me put it on the sun man let's see if you can get that look at that man the fuse was blown but it was passing just a little bit amount of energy man current and it was passing uh a test light it fooled a test light imagine that and it was sending current down to the engine computer it was just a millimeter probably of um you know smallest degree of metal making some contact at the time when it was in there but it was blown this whole time incredible huh yeah these things like this can get you and throw you for a loop guys let's go ahead and put another fuse in there and see the difference so there's our bad one we took out and here's our good one so i'm going to go ahead now and put that in and now we're going to test and see what we get Right away, I noticed there was some clicking going on and it stopped instantly as, I, as soon as I put in that good fuse. So let's see what we're going to read. The moment of truth. Yeah, we're at like 11.9. Man, I'm sorry guys, this thing is like kind of blurry. Yeah, you see that? It's about like 11.9, 12 volts. So now it's passing current. That bad? <laughs> wow. Okay, let's put the relay back and let's give it a try. All right, we got the relay in, we got our good fuse in. Now, let's see what happens, guys. One thing was happening, it's always a good hint. When you turn the key on, that check engine light was not coming on right away. It will come on after about maybe two or three seconds, but that's to tell you there's a fault, that it's not seeing the computer. It should come on pretty much instantly. One, two, three. You see that? It came on pretty much instantly. So now that tells me we are actually seeing the, the uh, engine computer. So I'm gonna try to crank it. If it cranks, then that means that was the problem. Cranked and started right up, guys. The engine is running. That was the problem, man. A blown fuse that was still working, man. What are the odds, man? Have any of you guys seen this before? I want you guys to leave a comment it, it, leave a comment and let me know if you've ever seen this if you ran into it what kind of experience you had what did it cause let me know i want to hear you guys opinion on this one man if you didn't know this now you know 
and no one is half the battle. Don't forget, we got a 12K subscribers, uh, $20 off coupon still going on for the Ultimate Can Bus Tester, globalcommonseries.com. Go pick yours up today. Solve your problems quick, man, and efficiently. Four years, huh? This car been sitting for four years. Yeah, four fucking years. Also guys, don't forget one of the best features as well. This comes with your Dodge Jeep Chrysler uh, Gateway Bypass. You simply plug in, hook up your scanner right there, and you're done. You're connected in, bypass the gateway, get all the stuff you need to do, delete codes, erase codes, read codes, program, whatever you gotta do. Definitely head over to our website and pick yours up today. Catch you on the next one, guys. Don't forget to leave your comments, man. I wanna hear from you guys.